I think of Pacific Northwest, I think of mountains, trees, waterways, healthy environment. A healthy salmon population is the icon for all of that. If we have healthy environment, cool, clean water, strong habitat, we'll have a good salmon population. The late chum run for the Nisqually tribe used to be the best run in the state. The chum were running, we had a good Christmas, you know, because we were catching fish and, you know, buying presents. I was always told when the salmon are healthy, we are healthy as human beings. And the salmon aren't healthy, so that means we aren't healthy right now. Salmon are really what we call a keystone species in our ecosystems here in the Northwest. Uh, there are a ton of other animals that depend on them as prey. One of the most important roles they play though is they bring nutrients back from the ocean and up our, our creeks and rivers, it's essentially acting like fertilizer and driving the food chain. So we manage salmon fisheries through a number of jurisdictions. Because they travel across state and international boundaries as they move out into the ocean, we work with the Pacific Salmon Commission, which manages fisheries up and down the Pacific coast. It's the forum where we work with the Canadian and Alaskan governments to talk about fisheries in, in all of our jurisdictions. North of Falcon is an annual process we go through to develop salmon fisheries throughout the state of Washington. We work with our tribal co-managers of the state of Oregon, as well as all of our constituents to develop a set of fisheries that will work with all of our conservation objectives and pre-season forecasts for the upcoming year. The term North of Falcon comes from a point in Oregon called Cape Falcon, where Washington stocks tend to conduct ocean migrations north of that point. The role of the public at North of Falcon is an informative role. We are there representing you, the public. We need to know what works best for you. Let us know what you want in your fishing season so that we can use that information to craft the season that works for you. It's a year-long process. The best thing you can do is get involved. Because we have a number of salmon populations that are listed under the Endangered Species Act, we have really strict requirements in place about how big of an impact any one of our fisheries can have on these listed stocks. So uh, at any one time in any pre-season process when we're setting salmon seasons, we're really managing for the weakest stock. Let's use a hypothetical. Say 100 fish in an ESA listed run return to their home river. The Endangered Species Act says that 90 of those fish, or 90%, need to pass up river to spawn. That leaves 10 fish for harvest, which are then split between the state and the tribes. On the state side, they're then also often split between recreational anglers and commercial operators. That leaves us with a very small number of those fish that can be harvested in river, even ignoring any potential catch that might occur in the ocean or Puget Sound. This is a highly simplified example, but those are the kinds of challenges we face when setting salmon seasons in Washington. So in-season updates and monitoring uh, involves uh, sampling the fisheries, monitoring the fisheries, looking at the catch rates, looking at uh, how many are coming back and making sure that you are within the, the bounds that you thought you were going to be in when you designed those fisheries. Co-managers also measure the return of salmon by um, implanting coated wire tags in a lot of our fish. As they return, we're able to collect those coated wire tags after the salmon have had a chance to spawn. And that recovery, that data management piece is integral in ensuring that we know how many fish are going out and how many are anticipated to come back. So most of the fisheries in Puget Sound are what we call mixed stock fisheries. And this is because the majority of the fish that are migrating to the rivers are migrating at the same time. So they come in from the ocean and they'll kind of congregate in the Puget Sound from all different river systems before they then go off into their natal rivers to spawn. Threatened and endangered stock similar to the still Guamish Chinook can have lasting ramifications all throughout Puget Sound fisheries. Essentially, when our Chinook stocks are struggling, we need to be mindful that those fish can still migrate outside of the still Guamish River through the Puget Sound, up through Canada and Alaska, and then all the way back again. Sometimes that can mean reduced harvest opportunities, for southern U.S. fisheries, and especially those in the Puget Sound. As we implement fisheries in those waters, we have to account for the impact on all of those stocks, whether they be Puget Sound stocks, Columbia River stocks, Oregon stocks, Canadian stocks. Part of that means that the math and the science that we've developed requires us to be mindful of these stocks during the salmon season process, and that is a challenge each and every year, but it's something that we have to do to ensure that we're meeting those ESA requirements and allowing these salmon stocks to recover. A single stock fishery or a terminal area fishery are fisheries that occur 
close to the mouth of a river or in the river where you know that that's the returning adult population of a particular species, a particular run. And it's a lot easier to separate those out and know exactly what you're catching. Although there may be multiple stocks within a single river, most times the run timing is different and so we can craft fisheries to make sure that we're just centering on the harvestable stock in any one system. We need healthy salmon, we need clean water. I think people need to stop living the comfortable life and realize we're gonna have to make some tough choices that are gonna affect all of us. There's a lot of work being done to try to recover endangered salmon. Um, there's partnerships, whether you're talking about with local governments or NGOs or the state and tribes working together to try to repair the habitat in the river or augment a stock with a hatchery program or change harvest practices or looking at other impediments to their passage like culverts and dams for hydropower. Once the season is set, then you have to monitor the fisheries both to collect biological information, uh, make sure that the catch rates are what you expected during your preseason planning, and then to ensure that you have made the escapement that you expected. We really got to commit to looking at this as a whole. You got to find a balance there to make sure that these ecosystems are surviving. I, I think that's gonna be the biggest challenge is bringing awareness, but I think we have great leaders in the state and the federal levels right now to come together. We are doing a lot of restoration. We are getting better at partnering. We are trying to work on some land use planning to make sure that we're putting people on landscape in a way that's protective of salmon. Those are hard decisions. You can't satisfy the right of everybody to have fish if we don't all sacrifice a little bit. Salmon are really a, a keystone species in our northwest ecosystems. There are a ton of other species that feed on salmon. Probably the, the most well-known are the southern resident killer whales, which depend on Chinook salmon in particular as a prey item. We don't have the fish we used to. We don't have the fish we should have. That's a result of habitat. We need to improve the habitat that we have. We need to restore what we've lost, and we need to protect what we still have. It's going to take all of us. These are everybody's fish. We need to work with our partners, federal, state, local, tribe. We need everybody involved. I do believe that there is hope that we can recover these salmon. There has to be hope for the future for our, our Pacific salmon. They're really an icon in the Northwest and we have to do everything we can to, to rebuild these populations and sustain them into the future. It's going to take a change in the way we do business, in the way we manage the landscape, in the way we manage our resources. I think we got a hell of a, a task ahead of us, but we can do it. I have to believe that um, as long as there's people in the Northwest that care about salmon, there's gonna be hope for recovery. I couldn't do what I do if there wasn't hope.